I don't know about you, but the first thing that comes to my head when I think of hiking disasters is the infamous Dilatov Pass incident of 1959. Everyone who reads about the Dilatov Pass incident can't help but be perplexed by the mystery over 60 years on. However, what if I told you that there was another horrifying yet unheard of Russian incident that occurred in 1993 which is equally as mysterious and terrifying? Today, it is often referred as the second Dilatov Pass incident, and with only one person living to tell the tale, it's easy to see why. This is the chilling story of the Kamar Daban mountain disaster, aka the Kuravina incident. Just before we get into today's topic, I'm really happy to say that this video has been sponsored by Babbel. Babbel is the number one language learning app in the world, and I've been using it for some time, which is why I was really excited when they reached out to me and kindly offered to sponsor this video. In August, I'll be traveling over to Sweden as one of my good friends has just moved there. I thought rather than rely on him, I wouldn't do the typical English thing of going to somewhere, going to another country and just speaking English like we do. I'd do my best to learn the basics of Swedish. So hence Babbel. Babbel is great for me personally as the lessons can be as short as five minutes and that's great for my terrible attention span. And um, it's designed by real language teachers as well, and you can really tell. The lessons are fun and interactive, hey. as you can see. And Babbel teaches you real world practical conversations. Hey Stefan, who more do? Hey Stefan, who am I do? Välkommen till Stockholm. Välkommen till Stockholm. Yes, I know my pronunciation is terrible, like it is in the videos, but I'm getting better, I promise. So if you do fancy learning a new language, click the link below to get a massive 65% off and start today. They're so confident that you like it that there's even a 20 day money back guarantee. So thanks again for Babbel for the sponsor and on with today's video. Ludmilla Kuravina, a professional climber, was to lead a group of six Kazakh hikers to the Kamar Daban mountain range in the Russian Republic of Boryatia. Korovina, who was 41 years old at the time, was a skilled survivalist and hiking instructor who was referred to as a master by her co-workers and pupils. Although she was tough on her students, many believed that it paid off as it made them better hikers. In 1993, she planned a hike into the Kamar Daban mountain range with the students. The area was seen as a safe hike especially in summer, and Coravona was experienced in the area. She was close to her students and had done hikes with them in the past. The team of seven, including Coravina, included Alexander, Tatiana, Dennis, Valentina, Victoria, and Timor. It is important to note that Alexander had known Coravina all of his life and saw her as a mother figure. She also saw him as a son. The group had been anticipating and looking forward to the trip for months, and the date which they were planned had finally arrived. It was the 2nd of August, 1993, and the seven all met in Marino, a town nearby. The six pupils were all eager to start their trip because it was their time to demonstrate to Coravina that they were capable hikers and they had learned well. They were one of two groups. The other group was led by Coravina's daughter. The plan was to meet up three days later on August 5th, when their two routes crossed path. After checking the weather forecast, which looked good, the group's journey began as they trekked into the mountains, unbeknownst of the horror that was about to happen. As expected, the first two days of the hike went fine for the most part. The weather was good and the group were in good spirits as they reached the peak, but their luck was about to change. Late into the second day, Whilst starting their descent, the weather took a turn for the worse. The forecast they had seen was wrong, and the group were hit by a storm of snow and rain. The group powered on, but due to the rain their clothes were soaked, which slowed down their time. They decided to set up camp and sleep for the night. In the morning, they made breakfast and carried on their hike. They still planned on meeting the other group, who were now at the meeting place, but Coravina's group never showed up. Her daughter was not worried, she knew how experienced her mother was and thought the rain had set them back. They decided to carry on, but she never saw her mother again. So what happened to them? 
Fast forward to August the 10th, five days after Coravina should have met her daughter, a group of kayakers were paddling down the river at the foot of the Camar de Ban Mountains when they spotted something peculiar in the trees. It was a girl, on her own, covered in dry blood. The girl was 17-year-old Valentina from Coravina's group. The girl was in hysterics as she told the kayakers her story. Expectedly, the kayakers were terrified and they took her to the police station where she filed a report. The story didn't come out until years later. According to Valentina, after the group had set off that morning after having breakfast, things took a terrifying turn for the worse. At the back of the group, Alexander let out a horrific scream. The group turned around to see him, and what they saw scarred Valentina for life. He was bleeding from his eyes, ears and mouth. He began shaking, collapsed to the floor, and became unconscious. As stated earlier, Coravina saw him as a son. She was distraught and comforted him, and told the rest of the group to go on. The group didn't get far before they heard another scream, this time from Coravina. The group turned to look, where they saw their leader gushing blood from her eyes and nose whilst foaming at the mouth. She shook violently before falling on top of Alexander. Next was Tatiana. She suffered the same symptoms, crawled to a rock and bashed her own head over it before passing out. Whilst running away, Victoria and Timo collapsed next. It was now only Valentina and Dennis left. The two ran for help, terrified at what they had just witnessed. Sadly, as they were running, Dennis began to bleed from his mouth and collapsed. It was now only Valentina left. In a panic, Valentina fled, leaving her friends behind. The only thing she had were a tent and some clothings on her back. Exhausted after escaping, she set up her tent and fell asleep. She woke up the next day, knowing if she was to survive, she would have to trek up back to her friends so she could take their supplies. She traced her steps and found them. They were still in the same place they all collapsed. After this, she trekked through the mountains, praying for rescue. Eventually, she found a river which she followed down, where she found the kayakers. The bodies were found on the 24th of August, 1993. All of them, with the exception of Coravina, who had a heart attack, were found to have died from hypothermia, according to an autopsy report. They all had bruised lungs and protein shortages. Starvation was identified as one of the causes of death. Finally, it was decided that the fatalities were an accident. Now, of course, with a case like this, there's been many theories of what happened, but I will start with the most obvious. Many believe that the story wasn't accurate. As the story wasn't told until years later, she could have been exaggerating or remembering the story wrong due to trauma, no fault of her own. The group may have simply died from hypothermia. The second theory was that they were killed by Russian agents after seeing something they shouldn't have. Due to this, the deaths were covered up by the police and medical examiners. The group had gone off trail, but this theory is clutching its jaws because of Valentina's escape and the fact that many people often trekked into the same mountains with nothing unusual happening. The third theory is that the group were killed by a nerve gas. This would match Valentina's description of the deaths. Perhaps the group stumbled onto an old testing ground, as there were reports of this happening in the region. This is a solid theory, but it begs the question, how did Valentina escape unscathed? She would most likely have suffered the same fate. Other theories include contaminated water from the mountains, or dodgy food, but the mystery remains to this day. The area was known for being a toxic waste dumping ground. They may have had some of this water with their breakfast. Valentina may have had less, hence why she survived. Again, people dismiss this theory as other groups drank from the surrounding water sources in the area and were fine. So how did six out of the seven die within minutes? I don't think we'll ever know for certain. Valentina doesn't speak about the incident and I'm unsure of where she is today as the incident happened a long time ago and there was very little exposure and news coverage. I'd be interested in what you guys believe happened to the group. Do you think her story is accurate? If you have any other theories of what happened, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and maybe subscribe. And don't forget to check out Babbel as well. Thanks for watching.